What's good team? Welcome to today's HTML crash course where we're going to be covering everything that a beginner would want to know about HTML from the ground upwards. So if you have no idea what all the hype is about, sit tight and let's get into it. So first and foremost, what on earth is HTML? Well, HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language and it's essentially I mean, this is probably a bit of a stretch, but it is Microsoft Word, just a regular text document with a few extra steps. And so it's really nothing to be too intimidated by. And yeah, once again, this video, we're just going to look at how it all works. And so to begin, we're going to start off and here you can see I have an empty folder called Learn HTML and I've opened that folder up in Visual Studio Code. And in here, what we're going to do is make an HTML file and I'm just going to call it index.html. And so with HTML files, typically like the primary or the main file is just going to be named index.file extension. And so in here, you know, this is our Word document with a couple, text document with a couple of extra steps. And so in this particular case, what we could just write is James anything like that and this is technically a valid html file and so now if we just come back here we can see that it has this index.html file here and now how this works is that we can read this over complicated word document in the browser by opening up a chrome tab and what i can do is i can just drag this file here into the browser and we can see that we have loaded our very first web document and HTML file in our browser just like that, super simple. And so I could come in here and make some changes just like that and save that. And now if we refresh this page, these changes are mimicked in our browser over here. So that's literally all it takes to have HTML written into the browser. Uh, there's obviously a lot more to it, a lot of nuances and technicalities, and it's like a very powerful word document is you know the few extra steps are quite comprehensive but if you just want to have text in the browser this is all you have to do and we could literally host this on a platform like Netlify and that would be a valid website now this is just an option if you want instead of having to refresh the page continuously and doing that drag and drop method if you're using VS code you can also come into extensions and look up live server live server and we can see that I already have it installed and that will enable you to uh, come into your HTML page and click open with live server and that's just an alternative and so now we can access that just by coming here and the benefit of doing it this way is that we won't have to uh, refresh the page assuming we follow the live server uh, standards properly so we're actually going to stick with that method in this particular instance and so now it's just running on our local host at port 5500 and we're rendering out that index.html file now i'm going to remove all of this content the second thing to know about html is that we have like a very standard boilerplate and so this is just like the initial configuration so that your browser can understand exactly what kind of document it's looking at and if you're using Visual Studio Code, you can use the shorthand exclamation and it will just load out all of this boilerplate code for, you know, the boilerplate for an HTML, a valid HTML document. And so here we can see that we have the doc type and it says it's HTML. We have the language is English, the head tag. So these are called tags. We'll get into that in to a minute. But the head tag contains meta information about your document. So if you're having a Word document, you know, like it might just talk about the character set or websites are made to be responsive. And so we can see that there's a viewport information here. There's some scaling. And then the title is just what comes up up here. And so I could just change this to banana. And we can see that banana occupies that new title. And so that's just some meta information about your document. And then inside of the body, which is the rest of the content, we can have content just like we did before. And once again, that will automatically refresh and we now have the body of our document, our supercharged, hyper-powered Word document rendering onto the page. Obviously, however, this doesn't look exactly like a Word document. And some of the key differences are, you know, obviously we can have text in both a Word document and an HTML document. 
However, now we have these tags. And so a tag is essentially anything that is wrapped between these greater than or less than signs. And every tag has an associated or partnering closing tag. And so in this particular case, we have the head tag and then we have its containing and closing head tag. And the closing tag is just denoted with this little slash in front of the type of tag that we're referring to. Everything within the tag is referred to as the, you know, children of that parent or that container tag. Now, one thing to note is that you can also have self-closing tags, and so they don't need a secondary or partner tag because they have this self-close before the end of it, and that is still valid HTML, but predominantly most tags will have an opening and a closing tag. And so typically how a standard document will work is you'll have a body. And so the body wraps everything that is going to, you know, you expect to be rendered onto the page that's not part of this meta head information. And essentially how it works is inside of our body, you know, like we would with a Word document, you might expect to have a, you know, if we were having a Word document, you might have an introduction or a header section. You might have a main section and um, we can notice that it automatically created those tags and we might have a footer section and HTML works legitimately exactly the same and so in this particular case inside of our body we could indeed have an opening header and closing header tag and then sequentially a main and closing main tag and then finally a footer and a closing footer tag and they do essentially the same thing and you know inside of our header we might want to have to open that up and we could have a div which is just referred to you know shorthand for a division so that's just a content division that's another common type of tag and in here we could have possibly a header tag and so instead of being a spatial or container-esque tag this is specifically for word formatting and so in here we could have the header which is going to be learn html and so now we can see as you would in a word document if you had a header so h one stands for header text of size one so that is the biggest size header text you know in a word document we might click title for font size and font weight and so we have just told our hypertext markup language document that we want to have the largest size header for our introductory text and that's what showed up on our page now beneath that we might have a second header so the secondary sized header that just says by james MacArthur. And now that comes up in a secondary size. And so we have kind of two main types of tags. One are container tags. And so they're like spatial and they contain information. And then we have header and paragraph. So a paragraph would be just like this. And here we might have, this is where our paragraph would go. And so these are just related to text formatting and you know typically are not spatially related. Now we can have header tags all the way down to H6. And so in here we could have banana and we can see that that comes up with a particular formatting style. And so it's all the way H1 through to H6. And then there's a number of other things you could do. For example, you could have a strong tag literally surrounding one particular element and that would bold that element. Or we could have a break, which breaks our line in two. Uh, and there's an, you know, a large series of things you could do. For example, we could have I just like that, and that would italicize this particular word there. Now, once again, it's important to remember that we have to have the opening and then the closing tag to make sure that our content is organized appropriately. And so we just want to have this header one containing our text specific to our header. Now, in this particular case, we probably wouldn't typically have these particular elements within the header you know they might come within the main section just down below and we could even remove this container tag here because it's not necessarily doing anything it's like a box within a box when we just don't need that to surround that you know our header is already a spatial tag that we might be using so we kind of looked at a couple of common tags there's just a few more that are worth knowing uh, and so as before we had a div and so we could say this is a div now that is one common container type tag. Uh, another one is a section. And so typically sections will wrap around divs. And 
you know, a typical hierarchy might be to have your main and then have three different sections in your main content, which is kind of like the, as you might expect, the main section of your document. And then maybe within a div, you might have a span just like that. And let's say that's a self-closing span, or you could close it traditionally just like that and say, this is our span content. And so if you were just planning on translating a Word document into an HTML document, these are kind of the predominant tags that you would be focused on. Now, obviously with an HTML document, it has additional capabilities outside of, you know, your standard Word document. Uh, and some of those are, you know, for example, we could have a form and inside of our form, we could embed an input with type text, just like that. And so just down here, we can see that now we have an input where we can add text inside of our document. And so obviously in a standard Word document, you couldn't really do that. Equally, we could have a button and that has type equal to submit, just like that. And we can have our button here. And so that's just showed up there. And in this particular instance, I've self-closed it. Uh, it's worth noting that inputs are always self-closing, but buttons, if we wanted to have text that just said submit, we can wrap that inside of the opening and closing button tags. And so now we have a little input that we can add this and we could click submit. And in this case, it's not going to do anything because we haven't wired it to do anything, but it's just good to be familiar with how some of these additional tags can work. Now this nicely transitions into the next thing that we want to kind of look at, which is attributes. And so an attribute is basically a property of a tag. And so there are a large number of them and you can look them all up on the internet, but some that we can see just here is in this particular case, this input tag has an attribute of type and we have set that attribute equal to text. And so it's basically assigning a property to that particular tag. Likewise, we have this button and we have given it the type of submit. Now, not every tag needs an attribute, but there are a large number of them. For example, a form can have an on submit attribute and a section could have an on click attribute. And you can see that when I actually start typing, we get a massive number of all of these different attributes that we can assign to a particular tag. Now, once again, 99% of them you won't end up using, but it's just good to be familiar. And so we can assign attributes to virtually any tag in here and, you know, they can have all sorts of different effects and it makes our web page much more dynamic. Now, the other thing to note is just in terms of the difference between all of these tags and their functionalities, most of them actually achieve a very similar thing. And Predominantly a tag is just a containerization of information. So you're just compartmentalizing it so that it has semantic meaning. And in this particular case, I could replace this main, the section and the span, and, and I could just unanimously use a div everywhere. So just use divisions. However, that does not have any semantic meaning. And it just is nicer to have these different keywords that we can use to really section out our content so that it makes sense for our reader or perhaps anyone that uses an assistive device that, you know, reads out the content to them, let's say if they were visually impaired. And so it's good to just be familiar with some of the main tags for sectioning information. The last one that I'll just quickly add to this list is UL. So a UL is just an unordered list and likewise you, and likewise you can have an ordered list and they just contain list items. So here I could have ASD and we can see that an ordered list has a numeric prefix and an unordered list, which also has a list item, James, that just has a bullet point. So they are also, you know, containerizing tags where the list item, you know, might even have just a paragraph item in, inside it, just like this. I can enter that onto a new line and voila, we have a paragraph inside of our list, inside of our unordered list. And here we just have some text inside of our ordered list. So with these tags, you can probably build 99% of all websites. So, you know, they're super versatile and powerful in terms of what you can achieve. And so the next thing we're going to look at is an extension of the attributes that we assign. And they're basically just some of the most common attributes that you'll find most tags have. And so the first one is ID. And so an ID is just a string. And so this might just be a first section. 
And so now if we come into our web page that we have open here, we can see that our ID attribute has been assigned to our section here. Likewise, we can see that these attributes exist on these other tags down here, but you know, an ID is basically something that we can just reference from anywhere in the document and it has to be unique. So we can only have one tag with this particular ID in our entire document. And the cool thing about that is that it will allow us to later when we learn JavaScript, select that exact tag by looking for an attribute with an ID equal to first section or whatever it may be. Now we can have IDs for every single element in here, but typically you would only have them where it's necessary. Uh, another common attribute is the class. And so you can have one class. And so this might be a particular style. So we might have style one here. Uh, and then this span within that div might have a class that is might have a class that is equal to style two. Normally you would name them more specific to what they might be doing. Uh, but equally we could have a, an additional style here by just putting a space, having a space separation between the two classes. And so yeah, class is a common attribute that we, you will see for a lot of tags on the internet. Another common tag is the style tag. And the style tag is for associating like design aspects to a particular page. And so for this particular style tag, I could say that the font size just like that is equal to 10 rem. And so now we can see that that blew up the font size of our banana just here to 10 sizing units or rem. And in this particular case, I could change it to 10 pixels and now it's going to be absolutely really small again, or I could make it a thousand pixels and it's just going to be phenomenally large just like that. Now there are a lot of different style properties that we can add. For example, we could have color green and that will change it to green. And we will dive into that more in our CSS video, but it's just really good to be familiar with the idea that you can assign styles to all of your different tags and just have a very simple HTML document. For example, we could have a padding around this particular element of 40 pixels. And so that will just add some green padding around of our item here. And likewise for this learn HTML just here, perhaps we want to have another style here that says text align center. And that should be in there just like that. And that will just center the text in the page. And there's, you know, a whole myriad of different style properties that you can assign. But yeah, we will dive into that in a secondary video for CSS. The one other thing that's just important to note is for each property. So this is the name of the property and this is the value associated to that property. And we just separate them using a semicolon. So here, once again, I could have background of yellow and that will just assign a yellow background to that particular item. So now currently this is a very static page and there's not a whole lot of stuff that we can do. There's two other things, however, that are really common on a page that you will often see and that is rendering images and having anchor tags which are you know hold references to different information be that an external website it's kind of like a link essentially and so in our footer for example me we might have an anchor tag just here that has an href to https slash slash www.google.com target is equal to underscore blank. And so here we've added two attributes. One is the href. So that's the external URL that we want to make a link to. And then the second one is target equals underscore blank, which just tells it to open in a new tab. And so I can close this and say link to Google. And we can see that that has popped up in our footer element just down here, if I remove that. And now when I click on this, this link will open up Google. Equally, we can do that with just about anything I could say. LinkedIn and it will open up LinkedIn. And so anchor tags can be incredibly helpful. Uh, another thing you can use them for is internal links. So you could internally link to a particular section. Uh, and so if I wanted to scroll to a particular section on the click of this, I would say, okay, select the hash refers to the ID. So after the hash, I can enter the ID of the element that I want to scroll to. So it's going to say, look for this section with this ID first section and scroll to that. And so now it's not going to do anything, but what it's actually doing in this particular instance is scrolling us 
so that that section is on the page. Uh, we would want to remove target blank from that functionality because we don't want to open up a new tab every time we do that. We just want to scroll up so that that section is in view. Um, and we could also use it to navigate between pages. And so in here, if I had a new page that was james.html, and let's just say I have my standard boilerplate in here, I could say, uh, add an h1 here that says this is a secondary page. Now obviously that doesn't show up, but we will see how to get there in just a minute. And underneath that I could have another anchor tag that's just href. If I use a slash, that's just going to take me back to the home directory. And I can close this and say link back home or to home page just like that. And now what I can do is if I come in here and just say James, it's going to render out the secondary page and I can click this link that routes me back to our original page. You can see that it's just using this suffix. Uh, and then back on our original page in here, when we have this anchor tag, I could add a secondary link. So let's just say I duplicate this and this says link to secondary page. And here I can just have this render out slash james.html and so now when I click on that that takes us to the secondary page and so we can see that the link that we're providing is actually just a route that we add as a suffix to our domain name and it just refers to the name of a particular document in here and so we could see that if I change this to banana it's not going to find a banana.html because that doesn't exist as a page so that is super cool. And then the very last tag, let's say on this particular page, we wanted to have something different. What we can have is an image tag. And so this would be for rendering an image and we can either use a local image uh, by providing it a local directory, or we can use uh, a live internet image and we can do that by giving it a source attribute. So source SRC is shorthand for source. And in here I could just say, picture of banana. Let's say I open that up in a new tab. Now we come in here and we can copy this image link and paste it in here. And then all images require an alt, which is basically just a text description of the image. So we can just say picture of banana, save that. And now if I just enter it down onto a new line, we can see that we have an issue. And that's because I have to self close my image tag. Uh, it's self-closing because it doesn't contain any actual text. And so now if I come back to this particular page, we should have a picture of banana, which indeed we do, and it's absolutely massive. Um, and so this is something where I could set a style to it and just say style is equal to width and just say like 400 pixels, for example. And now that's just going to be much smaller on our page. Equally, what we could do is just say 100 view width, uh, and now it's just going to be responsive to whatever the view port size is. Equally, we could actually put this inside of our anchor tag just here. And so now what's going to happen is it's actually going to be clicking on the picture of the banana, which is contained within our anchor tag. The anchor is connected or anchored in our home page, and that's just going to drag us back there. And so just like that, we can navigate between pages and you can see from just the simple content how you could go and build a full website. You know, let's say I wanted to add a theme, I could just make it so that my body has a style of background and I could say lime. And so now that's only going to apply on our primary page, but if I click that, our background is indeed lime, just like that, and that looks super hectic but maybe that's what you like. But that's probably just about it in terms of the most common tags you will find in an HTML document. There are a very large number of additional tags that you can use and you know all sorts of intricacies and complexities, but predominantly this is what you will see and find. But yeah, this is just for the intents and purposes of showing you, you know, some of the basic attributes, how the formatting of the document works and you know how we can get it rendering onto our screen. Uh, if you like the video, please like and subscribe. Stay tuned for the CSS one where we look how we can incorporate cascading style sheets to style a page and make it look excellent. 
and then for the JavaScript video that comes afterwards. Hope you learned something. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.